been billed as one of the most successful downloaded streaming docu-series of the history of the streaming service Netflix, in fact, allegedly making them a lot of money. I would dispute that in many cases because the money that they paid out to the former worlds known as Harry and Meghan still will have to go a long way to recoup that. That's all they've had so far, the docu-series. You know, the Invictus Games thing allegedly still to come. We think around about September time for that. And then, of course, the Pearl thing never saw the light of day and other things seem to have been scatterbrained around the place itself. But as you all know, Harry and Meghan were very keen, so it appeared, for Meghan to win, or clutch at least, that Emmy Award statue, as one can imagine. And then it broke that they were not even nominated. That, of course, now has not gone down particularly well. And according to a very close insider, Meghan herself is blaming only one person. As ever, let me explain. Hi, good morning. How are you? Nice to see you. Let's have a wave today. <laughs> yes. By the way, let me share this with you. If you love fish and chips like I do, um, there's nothing nice. There's a pot of tea, battered fish and chips, chunky chips, tomato sauce. Are you a brown sauce person? I thought, yeah, you look the sort, yes. And of course, a few slices of white bread and butter. What a delicious tea. And if you could afford it now, mushy peas, I know. Batter bits as well on top. Oh, goodness. Not good for you, but so tasty. If you're going to Harris, though, you need to get a second mortgage there, maybe a third mortgage, because his celebrity chef, Tom Kerridge, is selling fish and chips, and you can count the chips, trust me, and for £35 a portion. But they're not just any old chips. Oh, no, apparently the chips have been hand-cooked. Yes, not that. Also cut up by someone, a human. I know, all worth £35. It, I often say to you, though, don't I, if people daft enough to pay 35 quid for fish and chips, well then, you know, let them do it. We're not going to do it, aren't we? No. We can all club together next time we meet up in London of half a chip each. Back as ever to your break and roll story of the day. Now, this is fascinating, as I say, because it just shows the dividend, uh, what happens within the media world. You know, award season is very big for celebrities. They just love to get up there and find out that their peers, the people that they don't think like them, like them. And what the bigger story is, is that once you've got a statuette, things really happen. I remember interviewing the actress Faye Dunaway when she came over to London a few years back now. And she, of course, famously won an Oscar. But as she pointed out to me, it didn't really open doors. The public knew, of course, and the studios know, but it didn't really get her a plethora of brand new scripts. If anything, she said it was just as hard to fight to move forward. Would this have been the case for Meghan Markle if she'd have landed an Emmy? But here's where it gets interesting, because as we know, uh, they were rebuffed by the Emmy Association which starts out in September this year. Megan, seriously, furious, whichever way you look at it. They dress it up, but, you know, they've got that um, Hollywood Critics Award thing that nobody's ever heard of as a sort of byline prize. Fascinating. But according to a very good source, Megan and Harry both feel that actually the company should have done a bigger campaign to help them secure a nomination. And by a campaign, what normally happens is, you know, you put out ads saying, you know, the world's most streamed docuseries, Harry and Meghan, their story, catch it now, all this sort of stuff, you know, reminding the potential board just how successful it's been. But it's not your average docu-series, is it? It is, of course, a docu-series trashing one of the world's most famous families. And a lot of people I were told on that particular board felt rather uneasy about this. This could have been the deciding factor. But of course, in the world of Harry and Meghan, allegedly, it's never their fault, you know. Oh, no, it has to be somebody's. And it's an oversight by the people in charge of their streaming giant. Absolutely. And one time, and of course, let's not forget what will happen next is if this Invictus Games does not do well, this will really cement the fact to Netflix that only what people want from Harry and Meghan is truly trash TV, like their docuseries. If Invictus flops, that really will truly be the end, no matter what spin Netflix put on it. Difficult times, trying times, and more importantly, must be very, very difficult to be dealing with such egos as Harry and Meghan, who simply believe they are due an Emmy for trashing his family across the world. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.